Interfingo, chain, chamber presence, town councillors and Fingal councillors, and indeed the people of Bob Brigham. Um, we're here for a very special reason today. Now, there's more. There's one thing about Bob Brigham, and I'm not going to go into the technical aspects of the realm. Um, Bob Brigham is a fantastic place to live. We all live here, we work here. And if our environment is more friendly, more open to us, we will enjoy being here. It will attract more people to us. The public realm, where did it come from? It started in April 2010. And it came about, Peter Caulfield had a vision. And he knew that the people of Balbriggan would be committed they would endorse this vision, and that, you know, that we had great potential in Bobbrigan. And it was a great opportunity for everybody to come together, all the different bodies in the town, the Chamber, the Town Council, the Fingal Council, and the Heritage Group, that all these brains would come together and work out something positive for our town. Not only does the, the realm plan plan for the future. But Bob Brigham is actually working on it all the time. <coughs> Their vision is fantastic and it's for the future. But what we have done in the past, we've fantastic new streets out there. The road, the undergrounding of the wires. You know, there's a fantastic work that has already been done. And now the paint scheme this year and the flower baskets. And I have to give credit to the tidy towns. You know, we should have got an awful lot more marks in all fairness for the standard of that town. It's absolutely fantastic right there. <laughs> One of the things that the realm encourages is events and people coming together. And this is something that I have a great love of. But Brigham has an event nearly every month. And there's only maybe a couple of months that doesn't have something, and we're working on to fill every month. We have the Summer Fest in May stroke June, the Formula Fun in July, the Food Fest in August. We had a safety weekend last weekend. We have the Christmas market. We have a Halloween event organised by the Chamber. You know, we have, we're have we the envy of thing all. If people think there's something on about Brigham, every single person comes out, and without a doubt the sun shone. For every, well, apart from the safety week, that was a bit. But people still come out. People still come out. Everybody comes out and supports something that's positive in our town. And this realm is positive. People are going to actually see it and say, that's going to be fantastic for our town. And it's actually achievable. They're only small little things on a big plan. But every single person in Valbriggan can actually take a piece of that plan and say, we can actually make that work for our town. Because it is our town, we have a fantastic community spirit. I mean, every single event that was run during the summer was so well um, attended. Everybody had a fantastic time, and that's what it's all about. There's enough doom and gloom out there, and we're not even going to go down that road because we only do positive in Balbriggan. We're not doing any negative, and that's why everyone is here, is here to support the, the Relham plan. And I'm so glad that there's a fantastic turnout tonight. And it can only go from strength to strength with the support from every single person here tonight. And when you go home and you tell all your friends and your colleagues, you know, this is fantastic for Balbriggan. And we put Balbriggan on the map for the right reasons. So without further ado, I will finish up. I said I was only going to say short and sweet words. I'm now going to hand you out over to um, the Mayor of Fingal, Councillor Jerry Maguire. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Minister Ray, Kahir uh, Akronia, President of the Chamber, uh, Joel, uh, and Ray Farr from the uh, Fingal County Council, and Professor Gabriel uh, Cooney from the Heritage Council up here at the top uh, table. I'd also like to acknowledge the, the presence of uh, my colleagues on Fingal County Council, Councillor Tom O'Leary, 
uh, and the Boundary Town Commissioners, uh, or Town Council members, uh, Monica Harford and I saw Frank Snow there. And also, I, not, I had to neglect some of my uh, Councillor May McKeown, who also from Fingal County Council and Boundary uh, Town Council. And just acknowledge the presence of some of my former council uh, colleagues and uh, the former Eratus members, uh, Mike Kennedy and Trevor Sargent, are here. And all of you, uh, the other guests are here. I see Councillor David O'Connor down at the rear there, just after catching his eye there now, also. So if there's someone I left out, I apologise, maybe it's wrong to start mentioning names, but that's the way it goes. Um, you're all very welcome here this evening uh, for the, the launch of this uh, Balbriggan public ground plan, which is the heart of Balbriggan. And as, fair, as Mayor of Fingal, I'm delighted to acknowledge the role of Fingal County Council in the preparation of this plan, which has been conducted in partnership with the Balbriggan uh, Town uh, Council and Balbriggan Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I'm confident this plan will be warmly welcomed, and certainly from talking to people that are, uh, have been uh, minging around with on the floor there tonight, they're uh, very enthusiastic about it, and I have no doubt that it will be a success. And I uh, send an invitation to be supported by all the people of Balbriggan. Because they themselves have been uh, key participants throughout the process. And I uh, said the attendance here tonight uh, from across the business community and the wider community in general is testament to the excellent public participation in the making of this plan. I understand from the coherent there that the, this plan will be used as a guide for future uh, public uh, space projects and proposals for Balbriggan and will enhance the significant improvements that have been undertaken by the Council in Balbriggan in the recent past. And I uh, have to say, uh, congratulations, well done to all involved. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to call on Joe English, the President of the Chamber. Minister Kahira, Public Graphs, and our special guests. I won't even attempt to remember a name. Daddy Jerry has done all of that ahead of me. So, uh, but you're all very welcome here. This is uh, the beginning of a new journey, but the end of a journey that has started about two and a half years ago, as uh, Brian mentioned. And uh, it's the fruits of that work that are on display here tonight. I'm very proud as president to president of the chamber to be part of this uh, very unique partnership. Uh, partnership, as Grainne mentioned, was the brainchild of Peter Coffey, the then town manager and senior executive in Fingal County Council. Uh, I think it was, indeed I don't think, I know it was Tom Walsh who was uh, the chair of, at that time, uh, a subgroup in our chamber, as well as being president, um, and the retail committee. And it was a wet and windy night in October when uh, that committee was meeting wondering how they could upgrade Balbriggan Street, how we could enliven the street to drag back business that had been lost, partly through recession, partly through the continuation of roadworks that had seen business fly over a period of years before that because of disruption, which was necessary in order for us to get the upgrade we need for the future. But it comes at a cost to, to business and the business community. But in doing that, we have created uh, an infrastructure that's there to be built on for the future and for future business in Balbriggan. And at that meeting, he ventured to ask the question, how can we do something? Because we've been talking for years, but doing, getting it done, that was always the, the difficult step. And we harnessed in all new people into the chamber and old people that had been reconstituted into the chamber to see, could we get new ideas, new thinking? And Sean Crossan crossed our door and he put forward the idea, well, maybe we could capture the heritage of our town. And it was fortuitous that at that time the Heritage Council were granting uh, towns, walled towns, I think they were doing it around uh, Ireland, and rolling that out to other towns and villages. So we thought it would be a good idea, maybe we could capture a few bob to make a plan of some description happen. But it was no accident but maybe it was, but it was certainly fortuitous that we uh, met with the Town Council and Peter Caulfield around the same time, and the same discussions were going on. And in fact, they'd already prepared an application. They were already on the road to try to uplift the town. And that was the, the pivotal moment where this partnership was founded, 
and where Peter saw the vision of bringing different groups together to work towards one goal. There's no doubt that we had different agendas and we were working in different directions. But when you boiled everything down to what everybody wants for Bob Brigham, be you in business, be you a citizen, be you retired, be you a visitor, you want this place to shine, to sparkle, to be a fantastic place to live, to work, and for your family to grow up and to be educated. So we all wanted the same things, but we weren't communicating that to one another so well. And I think it's a fantastic tribute to Peter who convinced all of the parties to sit down together and have that informed discussion. And from that, it's been a fantastic story from there. We got the back enough town council, Fingal County Council, and more importantly than ever, we achieved in getting those much needed funds from the Heritage Council. We engaged on the steering group that uh, was elected from that grouping of bodies uh, to steer this project have done a fantastic job for Balbriggan. They've given a huge amount of hours, huge amount of time to, towards steering this uh, project. But, you know, we could be steering things forever and a day, but we were really, really fortunate that it was 2010 when the bubble had burst and things were all of a sudden uh, became affordable that we were lucky enough to win the services of Lokai to become the uh, uh, vehicle to bring this plan together. They won a very stiff competition and for 30,000 we won uh, their services to bring this project together. There's no doubt that uh, in the past year or so before that this project would have cost hundreds of thousands. We got the buy-in of all the business community. We got the buy-in of the, the community at large, and there's been hundreds of thousands of hours and voluntary effort matched the spend that the Heritage Council so, so willingly gave us uh, by the community. It's been a phenomenal success, a phenomenal uh, tribute to them, and I congratulate Lokai. The fruits of their labour are around you today. Is it an adage in business that failed plan and you plan to fail. And while we had that itch to uh, do something for our town, we realised that we needed a real plan. A business plan, a plan that would take us down the road for the next 10 years and, and, and make this town work in a way it has never done before. We now have that plan. It's all around you. The Chamber's mission is to help Balbriggan to become, and it is already a long way on the road, to be that desirable destination in which to live, to do business, and to grow your family. This is a unique plan which has showcased our heritage and makes Balbriggan that desirable place. It has also been achieved through the good works of our children. And the Chamber is part of the initial meetings that we had. We didn't know really what we were putting our hand up to do, but we did say that we would do a run, a project that would involve the schools. Aoife Bannum, architect and chamber member, became the senior person to lead out that particular uh, discourse with the schools. And behind you, you see part of the exhibit, that is the mini public realm, that it was the children's public realm for Bob Reagan. Another fantastic body of work, great compliment to the children, because not alone did they come with models and pictures that captured a lot of what the adults have been discussing, but they trumped us because they came up with even brighter ideas, bigger visions, and, you know, they win the day because they are the future. And so we've evolved, and this plan is now among us, and it's our job now to champion this plan. You have your CDs, you have your books, take them, and like the disciples, as I see the priests down there, if you look and look to me, Father, they go forward and spread that message. Because that's what you need to do from tonight. Because we are going to need every citizen, every business, every community group behind this plan to make it deliver the fruits that are only on show, only on paper now. What you've seen in the last couple of weeks, the low-hanging fruit, as some people call it, 
in the paint scheme. There's nothing easy picking of ever. It took two years of hard work by people around this room to make that plan uh, of the streetscape happen after our happy trip to Clannacilty. I think it was Clannacilty town, wasn't it? Anyway, the, uh, they, 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 they gave us a lot of ideas, but it took a lot of work and just continuous work going on there. The floral baskets, as was mentioned earlier, the, the, how we have uh, made that into to a small scape to almost a huge streetscape, and next year I'm sure it will be across the whole town. So we're seeing how these things can be made into reality. It's going to cost the Minister about 10 million to make this plan work. We can spend that money over the next 10 years. I vote that we spend it over the next two to three years, Minister, and that we make this a real example of community effort at government and local government and business community and community working together to deliver. And when we deliver this, and we will deliver, the reality is we'll be a showcase. We'll have a tourist town like it that Fingal never had. We'll have an industrial town like it that Balbriggan had in the days gone by. And we'll have a place that will be that desirable destination that Balbriggan deserves to be. Thank you very much for your time. Speaker is Professor Gabriel Cooney from the Heritage Council. Uh, Minister, Mayor, the Hero, President, everybody. It's a genuine pleasure to be here and to see so many people engaged in this process. The Heritage Council was uh, proud to be a partner in this, and that's what it sees its role as its partner, as facilitating public engagement as getting people to recognise the significance of heritage, in this case in terms of the public realm plan, as the coherent summary, so, and, and the President have been saying, I'll bring it as a real place, as a fantastic place to live. And that's what this plan is aimed at doing. Alison Harvey is the Planning and Development Officer of the Heritage Council. She'd love to have been here, but she can't be. I, I asked her by email, I'm not that familiar with the public realm plan, what it's about. And she said, it was a methodology, if you like, that the Heritage Council initially rolled out with, with, with historic towns, but has been working more broadly with, um, if you like, getting towns to recognise the significance of heritage and that historic core, uh, if you like, the heart of towns like our river. So what Public Ground Plan does is it considers and assesses the historic town core strategically and holistically, everything together. Identify the town's unique selling point. What makes it good and special? Through robust public participation, including key stakeholders. And to use that in-depth assessment to prepare an integrated and agreed plan or strategy for the future that ensures that historic settlement is sustainable and viable in the long term, and which ultimately enhances the town's overall sense of place and sense of civic pride. And that's, I think, what we're seeing in action here. And that, in a sense, the plan is is the foundation for further actions, which are outlined in detail in the plan. Heritage is about the past, but ultimately it's about people, and it's about the future, and it's about your future. It's the same the heritage of Brian Rigging for that future. And it comes into the Minister's territory as well, because that sense of well-being actually creates a physical sense of health, and prevents us from being downsided. I love that Gerlach's idea about Let's not, let's not go there. We want to hear positive. And they are tough times. Money is short. The Heritage Council is making the best value of the money that it has through its grants program, through supporting uh, county um, heritage plans, through supporting the work of people like Jerry Cabby, the Heritage Officer here in Fingal, who has done a fantastic job uh, facilitating, for example, the Heritage Research, uh, sorry, the Fingal Heritage Forum, of which I'm proud to be a member. And one of the striking things, and one of the reasons why it's a pleasure to be here, is remembering Sean Cross and talking at a forum meeting about the leverage value that the grant of the Heritage Council had created, the partnership, the goodwill of that 30,000 euro, or whatever the figure was, I think it was that kind of grant figure, I think they were 
and all the added value that came both directly in terms of a national body supporting Balbriggan to do this, working in partnership with, with Fingal, with the town council, with the chamber, and the significance of the involvement in the chamber, I think, that, that they were involved in this process. I think it's really important. Um, and so that's what the Heritage Council does. It thinks about the past, but it's the past for the future, and it's your future. And it's a real pleasure to be here. And thank you for that. Now our next speaker, um, Anne-Marie Farley from Fingal Council. Minister, Mayor, Carhillo, public reps and guests. On behalf of the county manager, who sends his apologies tonight, unfortunately he can't be with us. I wish to acknowledge the work that has been done over the last 12 months in the preparation of this very impressive plan. I know the plan is going to enhance and cement the co cooperation that already exists between Balbriggan Town Council, between Fingal County Council, the Chamber of Commerce, the local community groups and organisations that all work to get together to make Balbriggan a better place to live in and a better place to visit. I want to thank the staff of Balbriggan Town Council and of our, my own council for their tireless work over the last 12 months in helping to produce this plan. Particular thanks to Eva de Barso, Brian Murray, Selena Work, Manula May, Marguerite Murphy, Peter Byrne, and Jerry Cavi. Thanks for all that work over the last 12 months. Fingal is always, always happy to collaborate with other agencies. And the professor mentioned it earlier, I'd like to thank Alison Harvey of the Heritage Council. And we look for, for, forward to future collaborations with the public over the coming years. Bob Brigham, of course, is very fortunate to have a very strong, committed, forward-thinking and positive Chamber of Commerce. Thanks very much to the Chamber President, Joe English, to Sean Crossan and John Comsey, who made a tremendous com contribution to the preparation of this plan. Finally, I wish to thank local consultants, led by Conor Norton and his staff, who produced the plan and made sure that there was public participation in every part of the process. Thank you very much. To launch our public realm plan and the man with all the answers to all the questions. <laughs> um, please give him a round of applause. I know he's a busy man and he found time in his schedule to fit us in and you're very, very welcome. Um, James Riley, TD. Thank you. and current councillors and mayor and Cahira um, and town councillors. I'm not going to start naming everybody because it's generally required the next and job already as, as befits the mayor of Fingal, I have to say. But I do welcome and check very genuinely the commitment of Fingal Council to Balbriggan and the recent appointment of a town architect for Balbriggan and I think that's a clear sense of the commitment. I know also that there is a sense that maybe Balbriggan didn't get its fair share <coughs> of resources in the past. But I want to assure you the goodwill and attention of a senior minister at Cabinet table will ensure that that sense dissipates. It is true, as Brian has said, <coughs> that a lot of infrastructure work has taken place, roads, etc., etc., and more of that to come. But I think also there are lots of small things we can do in hard times that make a huge difference. And it is in hard times when you're faced with hard choices that that's when you really do reflect and think about how do we get the best value for money? What are the things we can do that might require a lot of elbow grease but not a lot in terms of money that can really change this town? But I want to just say to you, I made a lot of it. There's not a lot of people here know me, so you're aware of this, you know. I mean, I have a long connection with this town. I have lots of cousins here, and I see a few of them down the back there, the McCormick's and uh, the Macaulay's, and also. You know, I lived here outside in, in, in Balrothery for 10 years and my kids went to school in Balrothery and I do remember well, I'm sure you all do too, 
the nightmare that was a Friday evening if you wanted to come into Balbriggan on the old N1 with you'd be quick and the swords. So things have moved on and things have improved. But there's an awful lot more to be done. We need to concentrate on, on what our strengths are. And certainly from my point of view as a Minister for Health, I'm definitely going to make sure that there's a primary care centre delivered to this town. It has been spoken of in the past. I'm not going to promise I'm going to deliver. And that's going to happen a lot sooner than people think. And that's what's required on a more national basis as well in terms of if we're to survive and deliver health care in this country with an aging population, we have to bring the service to the people. We have to move chronic illness care back out into our communities, back out to the community away from our hospitals. And that we will do. Jobs is another big issue for this town. And again, even in these hard times, it's about networking and making connections. And we're in discussions with a major international company who have decided that they're going to locate in Ireland. And my job is to try and make sure that I can persuade them to locate here in Balbriggan. Equally, I've talked to the county manager on a number of occasions around this area. Um, and I've also spoken to other business people and other people around. And there are things like, you know, the upgrading of Railway Street, which is the entrance to the town. I remember actually the house in Balbriggan over or my brother, you know, we're starting to do it up, you know, you, do you start with the, you know, the front room, the back room, the kitchen, the back fiber. And a guy who's an interior designer, a friend of my wife, said, no, no, you start with the hall. Like, Why? Because you walk through it on your way to work every day, and you come back to it on your way home from work every day, and if it's right, you would be good. And that's the same at Railway Street. It is the corridor into this town, and it needs to be given a boost, and it won't cost huge money to do it. And we're certainly going to fight to get that money from the environment. The other area which we saw off that is the Maritime Museum, which would obviously be something that would be a huge boom to the town. And leading on from that, the possibility of a boardwalk on the beach. The great thing about this town is its potential. Its potential is massive. There are many other good towns, but do they have a beach? Do they have a harbour? Do they have a railway station in the middle of the town? We have all these things here. We must exploit them. We must advertised and we must and I know there's a huge appetite for this in part and upon for promoting Balbriggan as a centre of high, high cuisine and, and, and also its culture. And I mean I'm delighted that the Professor is here this evening and I know we're all watching the developments as they take place out of Greenwood Castle as well. These are all things that could help. It's all the small things put together. So I just want to say to you that I want to be sure that this town gets the attention that it deserves that it gets the support from government, which it deserves, and I'm giving you an undertaking that I'll ensure, Cabinet, that that will happen. So I suppose if I were to put it in a, in a, in a sentence, we will restore the beat to the heart of this town. And I think it's only appropriate and proper that as a doctor and a minister for health, that I would play a key role in Cabinet in making that happen. So I'll continue to work with the manager, whom I've met, as I said, on several times, several occasions, and I want to ensure a bright, prosperous, and a happy future for the town of Elbrigan. Thank you very much. Well, I have to say, there's an awful lot of ears have listened to that speech. <laughs> and we'll be watching with bated breath. And I've no doubt you will deliver. You have a passion that we all have for Balbriggan. It's our town, it's our people, and as Joe said, it's our future. It's the future for our children. And this is a fantastic start tonight that will only get better as the days go by. And again, thank you so much for your patience tonight. You're very welcome. There's some refreshments now at the back of the hall. And Mingle, have a chat about the plan. And the low five guys are here. If there's any questions anyone wants to ask, and you know, thank you so much again for your for your attention and safe home. Thank you.